Welcome everyone to Luke Live Online. This is session number 10, and I'm Father James DeLucio with the Paulist Fathers. Today we're going to cover Luke chapter 2, verses 21 to 40, in which Jesus is now formally presented into the temple of Jerusalem, and all that may entail. It's interesting that his first presentation, of course, is to animals and then subsequently to shepherds, the lowliest of the low in the society at the time, probably, uh, certainly uh, people who were of the Jewish tradition, but not really the practicing ones. You know, the shepherds, they were out in the fields. They weren't going to the synagogue regularly. There was no one to watch the sheep. And so, although the sheep were necessary for the temple sacrifices, one has a sense that the, most of the shepherds, anyway, weren't held in high regard by the society. So that's very important as to the, the pr initial presentation of Jesus. But because, of course, he's going to speak to the people of Israel, the Jewish people of the time, and the temple being the symbol of the formal and the organized religion, it's now that he enters there because that will become his venue to, to preach to the people. And the traditions, of course, being the foundation of how they understand themselves and how they understand God. As we enter into this section, I invite you to think of all of your sacraments, but particularly the sacraments of initiation. For those of us who were baptized as infants, hopefully we've seen some photographs or at least have heard the story of all that went on that day, the hustle and bustle in the household, the choice of the godparents and how that choice was made for either spiritual or familial or political <laughs> reasons. Uh, perfectly prayerful and wonderfully human and maybe not so prayerful, but going through with it. So we can have all those different associations as we try to connect Jesus' story to ours. And for Christians, that is essential, that everything about the life of Jesus, we realize, is revealed to help us understand our own lives. That's why God became human. That's the beauty and power of our faith and the incarnation. And for those who may be tuning in who aren't of the Christian faith, just to learn a little bit more about us um, and to understand us, uh, I invite you to think of these rituals. Obviously, these were rituals of the Jewish tradition of the time. There are corresponding things. Uh, even to this day in Judaism or whatever your uh, tradition may be uh, so that you get that sense of what we have in common. The ritual itself is different and the words are different, but presentations to the Lord and consecrating ourselves to relationship with God and others, that's universal. And as I say uh, so often, that's a point of intersection that we need to cultivate more and more in our divisive world. So here we go. These beautiful passages from Luke chapter 2 verses 21 to 40. And I guess I don't need my glasses because I'm not going to read them. When the days were completed. No, it's not that. I'm thinking of something else. Maybe I should read something. Now I've got it. <laughs> When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to God and to offer the sacrifices 
of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictates of the law of the Lord. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Messiah of the Lord. And coming in the Holy Spirit into the temple, when the parents brought in the child Jesus to prepare the customs of the Lord in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was spoken about him, and Simeon blessed them, saying, This child, behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And said to Mary, the infant's mother, And you yourself a sword shall pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after their marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day in fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the consolation and redemption of Jerusalem. Redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor and the favor of God was upon him. Well, that's our selection for today. I hope you made and continue to make some connections between your initiation sacraments or any of the sacraments that make your faith public, which is all of them, and the story of Jesus' presentation in the temple. Also, think of Simeon and Anna. Imagine in your elder years to be constantly aware of prophecy and hope and promise and almost to wake up every day thinking, is this the day? Is this the day when there will be fulfillment? Is this the day when Messiah comes? Is this the day when things will be made right? And to eagerly and with a great sense of enthusiasm be attentive to it, to look for all those signs. And for us who 
uh, believe in Christ, to believe in who Jesus is and all that he embodied, uh, that sense of every day, will we experience Jesus? Will we find Jesus? Will we be looking? Will we be attentive to see a sign of Jesus? Oh, it's so difficult. It's so difficult, isn't it, though? Really, we really have to open our eyes and <laughs> keep our, our glasses on because we can just get so caught up in the, the mundane. Or like yesterday, I was so super sleepy. Um, even if Jesus came before me, <laughs> my eyes would have probably drooped. <laughs> so, but I caught up with my sleep last night and I'm a little more awake and I can appreciate Simeon and Anna. What energy for elderly folks. I mean, she's 84. Who knows how old Simeon is? So those are many things to think about. On the comment section beneath this video, I refer you to my blog where I have further meditations, some questions, uh, and such uh, for you to engage more fully in this gospel. Thank you so much for joining me. Look forward to seeing you next time. Please offer a comment or two of your own. They're always helpful, uh, affirming me to continue this project. <laughs> and uh, for which I am very thankful that you have tuned in. God bless you. Wear your masks. Take good care. Bye now.